Welcome! Today we're going to talk about a Rolex day date from 1971. This is the reference 1807, which is basically a, an 1803 reference, but with a special finish. Now right off the bat, I'm going to go with the wrist roll, because you might be surprised to see a day date on this channel. I was too. But once I saw this, tried it on, I was hooked. So the key thing on the 1807 is this bark finish that you can see on the bracelet and around the bezel. Normally 1803s have a fluted bezel and a polished center link on the bracelet. So this 1807 is quite special. It's one of a few specialty finishes available on the day dates from this period. The crown has two dots indicating that it's a white gold crown. and not a steel crown as can sometimes be replaced on these white gold models. On the side profile you can see the very tall plexiglass along with its cyclops. This was the feature that probably gave me the most pause about a day date. I wasn't really sure how it would feel with a tall plexiglass like this, but once I saw it in person and tried it on, it really didn't uh, bother me as much as I thought it might and I've actually come to appreciate it for what it is. Being a white gold case you'll see two hallmarks the 18k hallmark along with the Helvetia hallmark. And these are 20 millimeter lugs uh, along with solid end links and you'll definitely want to use a special tweezer type tool to remove the spring bar. The 18K white gold has a warmth to it that you can really appreciate when compared next to a stainless steel uh, Explorer, for example, from a similar time period. You can see the white gold it just has a much more lustrous hue compared to the stainless steel. Comparing the Oyster cases together, you can see the Explorer has drilled lugs, whereas the Day-Date case uh, does not. The crowns are similar size and the cases are both 36 millimeters. You can see the different profiles of the plexiglass with the Tropic on the Explorer and the top hat on the day date. The bark finish is reminiscent of the bark on a tree and continues around the bezel as well as on the center links of the bracelet. You can see the bark really picks up light in interesting ways sometimes very shiny and other times almost matte-like. I like the subtlety that this adds over a typical 1803 bracelet. Day dates are equally well known for their presidential style bracelet, which has a lot of individual links which allow it to form fit your wrist quite nicely, especially compared to the Oyster bracelet on this Explorer, which has wider links. You can see the hallmarks also stamped on the bracelet clasp. This one has fourth quarter of 1971 as a production date. This bracelet comes with the more traditional clasp with the coronet here and adjustment positions. This bracelet does not have any quick removable links, but a jeweler did remove one link and now it fits quite nicely on my six and a quarter inch wrist. Moving to the dial, there's a lot to love here as well. First of all, I love the serifed fonts, and you'll notice this example has no loom on the dial or the hands. Despite the lack of loom, the dial still reads T Swiss T at 6 o'clock. At midnight, the day and the date instantaneously switch over. This is a non quick set model, so advancing the date requires going backwards and then forward again. This is a full set complete with its outer box. The outer box has a tag on it indicating it's an 1803 and that's consistent because the inside of the case back is stamped 1803 while the case is stamped 1807. A crimson red inner box
Opening the box would reveal the watch. It's a well-built wooden case. Paperwork includes the guarantee booklet. As is typical, the last page has the punched model and serial number, along with the stamp and the date of purchase from the retailer. It has a date card from the year 1971 in which it was sold. This also includes the punched chronometer certification. Here you can get a good look at what they call punched papers. You can see the individual dots pressing out the serial number. It also includes an instruction booklet for the day date, indicating how to set the date and a quick method, but not a quick set for the day and date. And here's the spare link that was removed from the bracelet. A wonderful reference for anybody that is considering a day date is the Day Date Presidential Rolex book by Pucci Papaleo which is amazing, beautiful photography, a wealth of information, and just really uh, a piece to enjoy on its own. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe, and don't forget to sign up for updates at watchestreet.com.